There are times when knowing how to fabricate a duct from the flat comes in handy. The demonstrator will be using the modified shiplap tools from Amcraft. We recognize that some prefer to use the V-Groove method for hand fabrication. While this technique does not lend itself to fitting fabrication as well as the shiplap method, it is in common use. If you have V-Groove hand tools, the grooving sequence you are about to see is the same. NEMA recommends the modified shiplap method for tighter side joints and stronger fittings. This demonstration will show you how to hand fabricate a 12 by 8 duct from a 1.5 inch thick sheet of duckboard. The tools you will need to have handy for grooving include a green handled or Murphy shoe knife, measuring tape or straight edge, the Amcraft guide square that matches your tools, the black tool for the first cut, the orange tool for the second, third and fourth cut, and the blue tool to make the fifth cut and form the stapling flap. We're going to groove a 12 by 8 duct with hand tools, we'll be using modified shiplap grooving. We need to talk a little bit about the groove sequence that we're using. We begin with this first panel, is the shiplap panel. The next panel you notice has the butt square edges on it. The next panel would be shiplap and the next panel would be butt edges. So we go shiplap, butt edge, shiplap, butt edge. The other thing then is we go 12, 8, 12, 8 for a 12 by 8 inch duct. I'll measure this now and show you the panel dimensions. There is a slight change in dimensions. This is 12 inches and you notice the butt edge panel is 9.5 inches. The 9.5 inches comes from the fact that when we roll this board up you notice how here in the corner the insulation overlaps and we draw a line there. I want to roll this one more time and draw a line there. And when I unroll that, you see I have a line here and a line here. Each of those are three quarters of an inch and my dimension then between the two is eight inches. So you see that we have three quarters of an inch on each side. That three quarters of an inch represents the inside duct dimension of eight inches plus one board thickness. We're dealing with one and a half inch board. So this is an add-on of inch and a half for that particular panel. Now, when we begin to hand groove, it's going to be difficult for me to groove a board if it's laying flat like this and try to push the tool completely across the board. It's, it's an awfully long reach. So what we do and what we recommend is that you make a table that you can tilt up so that when you make that motion across the board, you, you're not having to reach so far, you're beginning to reach up. So we'll pull this table up into place. And I'll get a piece of board and lay on the table. Now when we put the board on the table, we want to put it with the female edge down, closest to us. I'm going to be using the Amcraft tools, and I'll begin using the number one tool. Uh, it has a piece of metal that goes completely down. The, the purpose of that piece of metal is so that when I groove this board, I don't push down too far and make the groove too deep or, uh, or too shallow if I raise it up. So I'm going to set the board like that. Start the number one tool. And notice as I come out the top that I hold the tool flat. Now we're using Amcraft grooving tools. We're going to use the guide square. You, there are guide squares for both Malco Glass, Glassmaster and then also for Amcraft. Uh, the dimensions for your duct width or depth are laid out down here. You do not interchange squares. You use Amcraft square with the Amcraft tooling. Also, we've taken this square and we've put some grit sandpaper on the back. That's so when I lay the square on the board, I don't have to have much pressure on the square to keep it from moving. As we groove, there's a lot of force involved 
and you have a tendency to let the square slip if you have to hold it without the grip. So we've done the number one groove. The uh, Amcraft tooling, the second and third and fourth grooves are made with the same tool. They have a 2-4 tool and the tool's reversible. It turns into a, a three tool for us. If you look at the blades, you'll notice as I rotate it, the, the depth of the shift lap goes from side to side. So we'll use this tool and we'll set up a 12 inch duct. So I'm going to set the square down here. Now when you align the square, you want to align it with the right hand side of the previous groove. Well, that'll be consistent throughout what we do. So I'll stick the knife here, notice where it is, and there's 12 inches. So when we're ready to groove the second groove, we're going to use the art, the uh, two four side of the orange tool. Now if you're confused about which way grooving goes, take the tool, rotate it, set it in the previous groove, line it up, and then if you rotate it when you bring it back around, you'll be aligned properly. Notice again, we come straight out the top of the board. Again, I'll set my knife here. That was 12. We now want eight. Notice we're at eight inches there. Okay, so I started with the, with the two up. I now rotate the tool for the third groove, so I have the three up. Push it in and flat out at the top. Okay, so I have a 12 inch and an eight inch panel. I'm ready for another 12. So the previous was the three groove, tool was that way. I'm gonna turn the tool around and groove here. Again, notice as I come in that I'm flat on the surface of the board. I don't come in at an angle, I wanna be flat. and flat when we come out. The next tool we'll be using then is a tool that does the ship lap. This is not a two-way tool. This has to go in the board with the slope part of the blades moving into the wool. So it was a 12, 8, 12, and now I'm ready for another 8. Again, I'm on the right-hand side of the groove. See one side there, the eight. I'll set this at eight. Okay, we've now finished. Now I need to prepare the stapling flap. That's what the five, the last tool, the blue, light blue tool does. So I take my knife and I just cut down along that last edge of that tool and I cut that piece off. Now I slide the board up to the edge of the table. And I'm going to use my knife to fillet this insulation off. And you'll notice on our knives that this is the Murphy shoe knife that we're using. We call it the green handle knife. But you notice this edge has a sharp corner on it. When we receive these knives, we always grind a radius on the back side. We do that 
So I can take the knife and instead of cutting, I can roll the blade over, put the radius side there, and I can press as I pull down through here to make sure that I've cut through any insulation that might be remaining from that previous tool. Now I'm going to reach up, then I slip the knife between the paper and the insulation, and I simply just pull down and clean the insulation off. Once I do that, I pull that off and I now have my stapling flap. Now to get the interior groove scrap out, the easiest way to do that is to flex the board backwards and just roll the piece out. If you try to just get hold of it and pull like this, you're likely to leave a lot of this material down inside the groove. So again, flex the board up, pull the piece out. Okay, we remove the groove scrap, fold the duct up, and you see we have a finished duct ready to be stapled and taped.